In organic chemistry, we talked about chemical reactions being required for industrial application, where a product of a chemical reaction is the desired substance. At equilibrium, this concentration of product is in balance with the remaining reactants, as well as the temperature of the system, the pressure and the volume and so on. Equilibrium is achieved in a closed system where changes to factors are not supposed to occur. But if we're constantly drawing off a product of a reaction, we're changing the conditions of equilibrium. Consider the Haber-Bosch process as an example. Ammonia, the desired product, is removed from the gas mixture by cooling. Ammonia liquefies before nitrogen and hydrogen does. I'm indicating the removal of ammonia by my red arrow. What happens to the equilibrium mixture now this equilibrium has been disturbed? The equilibrium constant does not change, provided the temperature is returned to before the ammonia liquefied. To make sure the equilibrium constant doesn't change, the ammonia must be increased. This means the nitrogen and hydrogen reactants will have to form more ammonia. The resulting drop in concentrations of hydrogen and nitrogen are shown here by the green arrows. The increase in ammonia as a consequence of the hydrogen and nitrogen reacting is shown with the blue arrow. The reacting reactants cause the reaction to shift right. This arrow coloring used here is not a convention, rather a way to clearly indicate the course of events to re-establish equilibrium following a change. Le Chatelier's principle can be defined as the following. A dynamic equilibrium responds so as to relieve the effect of any change in the conditions that affect the equilibrium. This is a qualitative way to predict the way an equilibrium system responds to change. If a product is removed, reactants react more to increase the product. If hydrogen and nitrogen were added to the equilibrium system, they increase their rate of reaction to produce more product. We say the result of the change in equilibrium causes the reaction to shift right, which results in decreasing the reactant concentration. Let's take this reaction of dinitrogen tetroxide again and apply a change to its equilibrium. We'll consider this part of the graph. Notice how the nitrogen dioxide eventually increases in concentration to counter the increase in dinitrogen tetraoxide concentration. Increasing the concentration of dinitrogen tetraoxide increases the overall concentration of the nitrogen dioxide. But hopefully you can see that the ratio of the concentration of the two substances before the change occurred is equal to the ratio of the two substances after the change and once equilibrium has been re-established. When the volume of a mixture of gases decrease, the pressure of the gases increase, and this is in agreement with Boyle's law. Consider the reaction of sulfur trioxide into sulfur dioxide and oxygen. The decrease in volume momentarily increases the concentration of the gases. Over time, notice how the reaction appears to shift left, that is increasing the sulfur trioxide. Reducing the volume of an equilibrium mixture of gases at constant temperature causes a shift in the reaction in the direction of fewer gas molecules. In the equation, there are two gas molecules of the reactant side for every three on the product side. In case this is not clear, imagine a decrease in volume of this gas mixture. All the gas particles now exist in a higher concentration. Reactants and product. Let's say the concentration of everything doubles. The ratio of the doubled concentration is equal to twice the equilibrium constant. The system needs to decrease the concentrations of the products while increasing the concentration of the reactants to bring the ratio back down to the original equilibrium constant. Another way to look at this, if you have to decrease the total number of gas 
molecules in a mixture, it makes sense to convert three gas molecules, an oxygen molecule and two sulfur dioxide molecules, to two gas molecules, two sulfur trioxide molecules. You get less total amount of gas molecules. Changes in volume of pressure will have no effect on the equilibrium position of a reaction equation having the same number of gas molecules on both sides. Likewise, the addition of an inert gas uniformly increases pressure in the system. But since gases are miscible, that is, mixable, the same volume will be available to all gases. No change in concentrations. And this not change the equilibrium position. Temperature changes affect the position of equilibrium in chemical systems. Le Chatelier's principle is useful in predicting the shift in equilibrium if the enthalpy of the system is known. The reaction shown here is endothermic. 97 kilojoules of energy is absorbed for every two moles of sulfur trioxide. If energy is added to the system, as indicated by the red arrow, the equilibrium will shift to relieve itself of the change. It can only do this by ultimately reducing the added energy, so it will react more sulfur trioxide, reducing its concentration and thus form more products. The effects of temperature on the equilibrium position is summarized here. Notice that a change in temperature is the only change that causes a change in the equilibrium constant. In an endothermic change, the temperature increase shifts equilibrium to the right, forming more products, and this increases the equilibrium constant. A decrease in temperature shifts equilibrium left, forming more reactants, thus decreasing the equilibrium constant. An exothermic change, the temperature increase shifts equilibrium to the left, forming more reactants, decreasing the equilibrium constant. And a decrease in temperature shifts the equilibrium right, forming more products. And that increases the equilibrium constant. Questions you may come across will require that you use Le Chatelier's principle to predict various stresses to an equilibrium mixture. Occasionally, a catalyst will be thrown in, but as mentioned before in this course, a catalyst lowers the activation energy to allow a reaction to proceed more quickly. A catalyst does not ensure more reactants form products. Therefore, a catalyst has no effect on the position of equilibrium.